Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. And today is another installment in our tool series. We've gone back in the past where we reviewed what we call a crash kit, something portable that you can carry with you in your car to the junkyard to grab what you need for your project. We also covered a thousand dollar budget at Harbor Freight of what you can get as a starting mechanic or kind of high-end home hobbyist as a complete tool set that I promised to use as my well, my main tool set here in the shop, despite having probably over $100,000 worth of tools. I have been using that as my primary set, and we will have an update video on that shortly now that it's been a couple months, and I can give you a real opinion of it. But something else that you need as you kind of develop as a home mechanic, professional mechanic, you've got your own shop with a bay where you're servicing some customers, is you're going to need a welder. And now in the market, there are so many different types of welders, it's hard to decide what you should buy. So I'm going to try to do my best with a special guest coming a little bit later to give you kind of an opinion of what we think is your best money spent for the welder for both at home and in your small shop. So if you follow me here, we've got, guys, come on. I've got my starting line. Are you gonna come? Hey, I'm open. That's right, no one's here to turn the camera. Sorry about that, guys. All right, here, do me a favor. Close your eyes and just imagine this really cool pan happening right now, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm walking right here. I'm walking right here. I'm walking right here. And there we go. All right, okay, keep your eyes closed. You, hit, you shouldn't open them yet. Don't open them yet. You still have your eyes closed, right? All right, go ahead and open them. All right, in front of me is, well, basically Harbor Freight's welding lineup. Despite starting my first video off reviewing Harbor Freight tools by throwing one at the wall and saying it's trash and not to buy it, they still reached out to me. They wanted to ask why I didn't think uh, those pliers are good and they're actually working on making them a better tool, which is kind of a really cool thing of what they do to improve, but I more or less just needed to add a TIG welder to my lineup. I've got MIG welders uh, from your two kind of main brands. And uh, well, they were kind of cool and said, well, how about we send you everything? So in front of me, we've got a welding cabinet, consumables, we've got their MIGMAX inverter machine and their TIG 205. But I'm calling this a showdown. And right now in front of me is just the Harbor Freight lineup. Oh yeah, there's that really cool titanium plasma 45 as well. Um, but yeah, it's not a showdown with nothing else to compare it to, right? One second. Uh, rolling in, not on a fancy welding cart, I have my Millermatic 211. This is a machine I bought back when I was a manager at Speed for Sale. I built some really cool parts for some really fast cars with this machine. This is what's called an inverter machine, and it's what most modern welders are built on. It's a very close comparison to that MIGMAX 215, but wait. There's, there's a red contender. You've seen this welder around. Rolling in from the left side on my welding cart, because this has been the welder I've been using lately, is the Lincoln ProMig 180. And what's different about it compared to everything else out here, this is a transformer machine. Everything else out in front of us is an inverter machine, kind of the latest, greatest technology, whereas this is the old tried and true trusty transformer machine. There's a little bit that we'll go into and talk about the difference between an inverter and transformer, what exactly that means, because just because these are inverter machines doesn't mean they don't have transformers, they just have a different style. Then we're gonna get into a little bit of welding tech, and then, we're gonna do some welding and give you some honest opinions of our three MIG machines. Now, I know what you guys might be thinking. Harbor Freight sent me all this stuff. I'm gonna only be able to say nice things about it. One thing I do appreciate about Harbor Freight and when they send stuff, they only ask that we're honest. There's no non-disparagement rules. I, if it's not good and I don't like it, I can be honest about it, which I really appreciate because I want to give you guys the best advice possible when it comes to buying some equipment that you're going to need because it's not a small investment. So uh, yeah, let's build this out. Also, it's kind of warm, so I want to turn my fans on and you can't hear me when the fans are on. So uh, yeah, let's get some welders out.
And we have got everything out of a box and into its stand rolling cart. Uh, the Miller, unfortunately, doesn't have one. Lincoln, well, the Lincoln's actually on the Miller's old cart. So let's talk about everything that we've got in the Vulcan and Titanium line. Now, the configuration, they did fit. If you look in the time lapse, I even was kind of pulling tape measure to figure things out. I could have stacked them all facing out this way, but there's two problems with that. One, on a MIG machine, you need to be able to flip open a door. We've got a nice, fresh, I believe, 10-pound spool of 030, mild steel welding wire. Everything's already fed through to the end of the gun, What I do appreciate. And on some of these machines, you have a cold feed button. What that basically does is full speed ahead, feeds that wire through without a welding current, so that way you're able to change wire, feed new wire, whatever you need to do in that regard so that's all ready but the problem is if i turned it sideways and if it lived in the middle or on the end and i tried to open that door it would hit something if we put it down on this end well we've got two gas cylinders that will be living there both the co2 argon and pure argon mix for the tig which well it's in the corner empty over there i got to get it refilled i haven't bothered because i didn't have a tig yet so now that we've got that um well i'll need the gas but I decided on this particular layout um, because of all the machines, you can't easily take the connections off of the MIG machine. They basically live there full time and it lets them kind of drop down here. I have to be a little more careful. There we go. Let's them just kind of hang down and live on that handle side. There's enough airflow to keep these things cool. The plasma torch, they connect very easily. This is just a couple screw fittings, snaps in. This is a quick turn. Air needs to get to the back of that. And then again with the TIG, it's the same thing. You put your plugs in, push in, turn, ready to go. Super quick and easy. So that's this is the layout I went with. I like it for function. Sure, there's a pretty way to do it but we're going for function again this will carry two gas cylinders um, up to the real big boys and then on the back we have got our couple more wire hangers and some tig consumable rods really putting all of this together i have two small complaints with the aluminum rod it's not very strong and just dropping it down it busted out the bottom so i need to quickly get a proper case to hold those things where if you look at their steel rods they have them rubber capped on both ends as i'm expecting they've had a fair bit of kind of blowouts there um really that's about it auto regulated on the plasma which is really nice we'll go into more plasma and tig stuff later on again this is our MIG welder shootout. Uh, just talking about the cabinet. If you wanted to buy the cabinet, they have smaller ones like this. I say it's worth saving up and springing the extra if you've got the room. Obviously, you may not have the room. You may be stuck with something smaller or just, again, carrying a machine around. Uh, I appreciate just all of the extra little room for consumables to throw in, uh, manuals that you probably aren't always going to read i've got the tig stuff there the accessories for the tig welders so i really i like this cabinet it's it's pretty good it rolls well drawers close well put together really 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 simply so that's a perk but what i'm going to go ahead and do right now is we're going to go back to a tripod where i can stand behind these three machines and talk a little bit about the terms inverter machine and transformer machine those are your two main big differences when it comes to really anything welder tig mig they've all changed over to where we're starting to see this inverter technology and it's very prevalent so let's talk about that and then we're gonna have a special guest stop by and uh we're gonna use all three of our mig machines and just give you an honest opinion of what we think of them well actually before that i kind of yeah, let's get all that cardboard cleaned up. 
All right, before we fire up the machines and start welding, we're gonna talk welder tech just a little bit. We're not gonna go too insanely deep, but we're gonna give you the tools that are gonna help you decide what's gonna work for your situation. Now, when we're talking transformer machines, that is the oldest welding technology. That's what Lincoln came out with when they basically made some of the first welding equipment. It works with a transformer to control, adjust the voltage, stepping up voltage, amperage, to control the electricity to do what we need it to do to make our weld. They uh, are just simple, very robust machines. There's not a lot to them and they work and they work for a very long time. One of the big drawbacks to a transformer machine is they make a good amount of heat that it's hard to get rid of because the components are so big and heavy they just absorb that heat. But because they are such a simple machine, they're really good in bad environments. What do I mean by that? If you have a just ton of moisture all the time, lots of lots of dust, if you have a dirt floor in your shop, if you're dealing with just you know grinding dust everywhere, transformers do a really good job of just living in a bad environment and just working all of the time. They uh, aren't the most energy efficient for the power in versus out. Um, most online you know, articles rate them at about 60% efficiency. So if you're welding all day long in a dirty environment, um, you're gonna see a higher power bill than you would with some of this new technology stuff. So new technology, inverter machines. Now, just because we call it inverter versus transformer does not mean an inverter machine does not have a transformer in it. You still need to have one to control AC to DC switches, the amperage changes. There's a lot in electrical theory we don't need to go into, but you have to have a transformer as part of that process. The way the inverter machines get by with having such a small inverter is in kind of a cool trick where they change the frequency of the power coming into them. They have a very complex set of switches and doodads and thingamajigs that turn that 60 hertz, I believe, into up to a million hertz. Like they, they change the pulse to such a huge frequency that allows them to get by and have a much stronger amperage range coming out with you know, the same power coming in. One thing you also get out of most of these inverter machines is the ability to plug into a 110 outlet or a 220 outlet. Whereas our Lincoln down here, it can only run 220 or you can purchase it for 110. So you are not able to do a quick on the fly switch compared to these newer machines. Part of the reason you're able to do that in these new machines is they are heavily computer controlled. There's a lot of circuitry in them. Now with those computers, you get some really cool new technology. Uh, auto set, where you tell it the thickness of your welding, the wire you're using, and if it's shielded or not shielded with a welding gas, and the computer kind of monitors and controls the wire speed and amperages for you. Now, not everyone likes that. Sometimes you just, you want to know exactly what's coming out of the gun. So a more advanced user is not likely to use that. But if you're starting up and learning to weld, it can be a useful tool to have the machine looking out for you, helping you get the best weld possible because welds are structural. It's not something you want to use an $80 machine for to build something you need to rely on being strong. Questionable choices, not stupid choices, remember. Another nice benefit of these inverter machines is they're very efficient. They tend to consume less power overall, they, they call the efficiency rating in the 90% range, which more or less means that you lose less power to heat like you would in a transformer machine. Some of the biggest drawbacks to these inverter machines, they're not easy to fix. Generally, all of the circuit boards are fully potted. What that means is it's a fully sealed board to help protect it against the elements, but that also means if a 30 cent part of that circuitry goes bad, the entire board will need to get replaced. The other thing is with all of those small switches handling that high frequency change, they generate a lot of heat, but they also dissipate it very quickly by lots of airflow. These have generally very powerful fans. They move a lot of air, especially compared to a transformer machine, but that creates one other really big drawback. When you're moving a ton of air, if that air is dirty from metal grinding dust, from dust and dirt on a dirt shop floor, it tends to 
clog everything up very quickly. So you need to be on top of making sure they're cleaned regularly. They have to have a lot of airflow. With a lot of airflow, they work great. One other benefit, you know, if you need a mobile welder, if it's not going to sit on a cart, you don't have that much space where you're going to pick it up and set it on a shelf sometimes, these inverter machines are very light. I mean, you can just pick them up. Um, now, when I say very light, sub 50 pounds, where you approach 100 pounds, sometimes more for a bigger transformer machine. So if you need something that's not going to live in a cart, inverters work really well for you. There are also inverter machines that are what are called multi-process, where they can do stick welding, they do MIG welding, and they can do TIG welding, but they can only do steel and stainless steel. Seeing as how I plan to do aluminum and potentially other exotic metals, I need a dedicated TIG machine that's also able to run AC current out of it. So if you see yourself doing just some steel, occasional stick, um, a multi-process could be good for you, this is pure opinion. I've not used them enough to state this beyond, you know, my objective opinion. My concern with them is you can't always do everything well. If you have a machine trying to do everything, you're making some compromises to, to get it all in one machine. But if you have very limited space, you need the capabilities of stick welding, steel TIG welding, and MIG welding, a multi-process could be pretty good for you. Now, if budget is your big concern, all of these kind of are $900 and up. I'm rounding up a little bit. This is about $850 from Home Depot, Northern Tool. This is right at $899 from Harbor Freight. They have the titanium line inverter machines that are a little bit more affordable in the $600 price point. My personal opinion, you shouldn't spend less than $400 on a good welder. There are some offered. Harbor Freight has their budget budget brand, the Chicago Electric brand with, uh, I'll say value welding. But again, if you're doing something structural, if you're gonna be doing it more than once every five months, look at least into the titanium line. If you have absolutely no budget concerns at all, the Miller 211 comes in, it's come down in price, $1,850. When I bought it, it was $2,200 plus another $150 for that welding cart. It is the most expensive thing on the screen. It is a very good welder. It was my first experience with an inverter welder where I had to learn a couple things. They tend to ramp up slowly where the weld for that first split second is cold and then fires up heat. So you have to learn to pull back before you push forward. Just a couple things that are different this will probably be the same, I don't know. It's a couple years newer in technology. There's a chance that it just fires up hot and is ready to go. Do I believe this Miller machine is worth more than $1,000 than the Vulcan inverter machine? No, I think with most of these inverter machines you're seeing, most of them come from the same factories. So if I was buying an inverter machine um, again, I, I, I would not spend this money. Um, even when it was brand new, I wasn't happy with it. So if I'm gonna have to make compromises, I'd rather have more than $1,000 in my pocket and have a bright orange machine. So that's enough talking. Um, I've gotten things set up. I've explained what I liked and what I don't like, but what you wanna know is how do they perform? So we are gonna put them in the hands of a guy who's been welding his entire life. Um, the doctors were amazed to see him come out of the womb with a set of brazing glasses and a stick welder in his hand. So, um, yeah, let's get Randy welding. You may remember him from the uh, Johnny Reb series where, uh, yeah, he welds. That's, that's what he does. Bosco, are you ready to weld? It appears not. But with Bosco, we get Randy. Hey, Randy. Hey. So this is Randy Gronhoff with GRC Fabrication. You were a vital part in helping Johnny Rev uh, live. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's currently broken. That hasn't. Nice, nice work. That'll come out in a later video. But um, if you listen closely, you hear the buzz of our Lincoln machine going. It was the one that had the tank. Um, I brought Randy in. I can weld, but you are weld. <laughs> so you've been welding how many years? Uh, all of them. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I, I joke that you came out of the womb with a, a, a welding stick in hand. It's not far from the truth. No, probably not. So, um, but what we are doing, uh, just so he's going to be able to give the best impression and we can kind of film the best 
um, runs on these test squares is he's just kind of doing a quick get used to the machine and you just went off the the specs on the machine and yeah we'll, we'll just start out with the listed specs on all of our listed settings on all the machines and obviously once you learn the machine, you'll want to tweak a little bit from there, but that'll give us yeah. a good baseline for every machine. And what we're referring to exactly is inside all of the machines, they tell you, okay, you're using this particular wire, that thickness of wire, how thick the material is, what your base setting should be. And I think you said, other than being a little bit cold, that was pretty much spot on. Yeah, yeah it's a good setting. It's not a bad run of machine. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do that with all of them, kind of get a feel for them. And yeah. What machines are in your shop? Uh, I, I'm a Miller guy, I'm, <laughs> and, and I'm an old school Miller guy. Yeah. I, I like all my old transformer machines. So, uh, but despite your blood being blue, you're going to be honest and unbiased. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter to me as long as it works. But. <laughs> yeah. As long as as long as you can put the metal together. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a hood so we can try to kind of watch as he welds. We're going to get a little bit of uh, Randy welding action with our Lincoln Pro Mig 180. Then we will set it up to the Millermatic, and then we will finally end up with the Vulcan. And once we're all done, then we'll get opinions. Okay, I will, well, I'll try and hold my judgment. <laughs> if we just see Randy throw a helmet, that means the machine has just made him very mad. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I won't throw anything. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe at the end. Yeah. Just avoid, uh, well, actually any of the cars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, we are behind the mask and Randy is in his PPE and hopefully this will let you actually see the weld puddle as he's welding. A little more grunt now. All right. We are, uh, you want to do any more welding with the Lincoln or you think we're ready to take you back home to Millertown? Uh, well, let's get me back to my home, I guess. All right, so what we're gonna do now is, again, I only got one canister, so we're gonna change that over to our Miller, get it plugged into the same extension cord. Again, trying to make it as scientific as possible. Same gas bottle, same extension cord, all, all the same wire thickness. We'll see how that works. All right, so we have the Miller hooked up. Because I can't stabilize that gas canister, it's still living on the rolling cart. Because uh, we don't want to make a rocket, do we? It's my, not my shop, it sounds like fun to me. <laughs> Could be fun. Uh, something that is different, the fan just ran all the time on that one where in your test, like that cycles up and down, which is kind of nice as yeah. far as noise goes, that it just only runs when it needs it. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't sound like a legitimate complaint, but it is. it does get tiresome listening to a fan all day long. Yeah, just that hum. Yeah. So, so that is nice. I imagine if you were running production on this though, that I mean, if you got multiple guys in a shop, you can't hear anything anyway. <laughs> but um, if you're working on a project by yourself, it's it's nice to have a little <laughs> peace and quiet every once in a while. So same setup as well, just a simple uh, T weld. So we got two uh, two welds to go. Now, one thing we did notice is you backed the wire speed down a fair bit from the suggested. Yeah, uh, this machine just in our off camera test has got. Um, considerably more power, which means it's burning wire up quicker. So we back that wire speed down quite a bit just to get a, a similar puddle. Yeah, it's a kind of cosmetic thing too, yeah, just a little bit less, of everything. So. All right, well, we'll see uh, how I guess old trusty does for you there, right? And this is an auto set machine, but we're not running that feature. We're just manually adjusting it to, yeah, so to get with what the, we want. With the auto set, you would tell it how thick your wire is and yeah, the thickness of your material and, and let it, it let the brain do the thing. Yeah, and then it tells you how to do your job. Yeah. It's a cool thing when you're learning, but you never learn the right way. Uh, it's hard for a guy that's grown up around older machines to move to an auto set. Um, it's a cool feature for guys that are, that are learning or new, new to it, but yeah. it, it's hard to teach an old dog. Much better. Nice little run. All right, no opinions yet. We're going to go ahead and uh, get the MIGMAX powered up. I'm gonna probably move the gas canister actually onto the Vulcan cart because my plan is to run that rig around. Um, 
And if we somehow decide one of these two is the better MIG, well, it can go right there. So we have got the MIG Max 215 set up. I believe you put a little bit more heat, a little bit, bit less wire speed, correct? Then it's, it's listed settings, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing we also noticed right away too is that behaves like a, a TIG machine in that it has post flow. You stop welding and the gas keeps going for a second. Yeah. So. Uh, which is a pretty nice feature to keep, keep the velocity at the end of the weld. Um, it's just a little weird to get used to. Because <laughs> I've I have never used a big machine that did that. Which, yeah. And I can also see if you're doing thin stuff, you get a little bit of cooling effect as well from it. Yeah. So I, it's just a new different thing that's kind of cool. Yeah, just a little weird. It's, it feels more like a TIG weld at the end than, yeah. than a MIG weld. So, all right, well, let's see how that runs and then, uh, then we'll set up and get opinions. All right, so we have got the same run on every machine. We're gonna let those cool off so we can kind of look at it. We'll let the machine cool off, turn it off, and uh, we'll set up for a tripod and do our uh, final opinions. Okay. Do you have some? Yeah, I do. All right, so we have welded a foot, right? About? Yeah, roughly for every machine. So about a foot, which if we're being 100% honest, it would be nice, well, you'd probably want to run at K, you know, four to five feet total to be. I mean, you want to spend a day on every machine to yeah, really which, get a feel for it. Which we really couldn't do, so just we're trying to give quick feeling, and that's why I brought in someone who's welded a lot. He can make a really snap first impression of each machine so we can give you the best possible buying advice. So, buying advice. Budget, no, you know, no dollar amount. Which machine do you pick? Well, I, I think we should first say none of these machines are bad machines for right. the hobbyist. Yeah, they, they've all performed incredibly well. So we had an inverter machine or a uh, transformer machine in the mix, and it didn't do bad. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it did well, but again, you're buying it. Which one do you buy? Um, if no money, money. money aside, yeah. I, I'd, I'd have to go for the Miller. I, I'm probably a little biased there. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised. Yeah. Wow, the guy that has 14 Miller machines <laughs> is going to take the Miller. But Miller's service history is phenomenal. <laughs> they stand behind their machines for yeah. a long, long, long time. So yeah. for that investment, it's it's nice to know you'll be able to get parts for it for the, the indefinite future. I'm probably being a little unfair on the Vulcan machine picking the Miller over it initially. Um, because it's the new kid on the block, we don't know yeah. what the service history is yeah. because it's new. Um, but it's a fantastic machine. It really is. I'm, yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised by it. Um, and the price yeah. point's phenomenal. So yeah, <laughs> with, with money in mind, I, I would definitely take that machine. Yeah. It, it has a couple things that shocked us kind of the pre-flow and post-flow of the gas. And what, what that is when we're saying that is before the electrical arc starts, it's already flowing the shielding gas where both other machines once the arc starts, like it kind of pairs together. That's something you find more in like this, a TIG machine where, especially when you're welding uh, aluminum, like shielding gas is insanely important. It's always important, but it becomes very important in a TIG machine. So we could have opened a manual and read to see if there's something to change about that, but we didn't because who reads manuals? Uh, it's just, it was kind of a nice feature that we didn't expect that. Yeah. I can't say we saw a result. Hey, it is Jared from the not too uh, far off future, but I wanted to jump in real quick and interrupt uh, old Jared and Randy from the past where I actually was using, there we go, the uh, Vulcan MIG on some of that thin sheet metal. And I found that when you get the settings just right, that post flow and pre flow worked incredibly well to keep that sheet metal cool. And I was actually able to burn through some uh, small thin sheet metal work faster than I normally would have been able to. So it turns out if you uh, either reading the instructions or just play with it long enough, you're gonna figure out how it works. And uh, I'm, 
I'm quite impressed uh, with what it's been able to do so far. I can't show you what I've been working on just yet, but that'll come later. So uh, let's go back to the two guys sitting behind machines talking about things they, well, they just didn't know about then. I will say having run both of these when I first bought the Miller, there was, to me at least, kind of a learning curve getting used to it. I'm not gonna say that I, I've been using the, the transformer for a while, so I'm not gonna say I've kind of you know, remembered how I had to weld with the Miller, the Vulcan just, you know, for a pro-am or am pro, I'm not <laughs> quite, not quite anywhere near Randy's level. The Vulcan felt just really comfortable out of the hand right away, so. It does have a good feel, the, the gun has a good feel, and one thing that is a big deal to me is consumables. Um, all the parts in there look like a Tweco consumable, so yeah. they're readily available. Yeah, they're, they're actually marked Tweco style. Perfect. So okay. it's a shared consumable. It's not a only Harbor Freight thing. So you can get it from Harbor Freight. You can get it from any welding supply. That It's, it's going to be something you can get yeah. just about anywhere. It, which... It's always important to have a good relationship with your local welding shop and <laughs> being able to service the machines you have. Yeah. One thing I do want to just kind of quickly add in that we hadn't covered, the ground clap of the Vulcan. Um, or the ground strap, we won't say the clamp. Um, that was impressive. Yeah, it's, it's a nice, high quality four gauge cable, which is just yeah. kind of a surprise to see a really quality cable on it. The, cramp, yeah. the clamp, it, you know. It, it could be better, um, but that's, that's kind of a wear item on any wire welder. Right. The way welding ultimately works is a controlled short, and to have a controlled short, you need to be able to flow that current back. So the ground is a very important part of it. So that, that was a cool thing that we both were, were impressed with. Regardless, for $900, that it kind of punches well above its weight class. Yeah, it really does. It's an impressive machine. So um, hopefully it helps you a little bit. Uh, if you're doing sheet metal, the Lincoln does have a good good place at home or another another transformer. Otherwise, if, if you're a diehard Miller fan, <laughs> guilty. Sp spend a lot more money. Otherwise, you can probably get by just, just great with Harbor Freight. So um, we're going to put you on the spot. I'll give you like four seconds to think of something after to come up with something, so. something witty yeah something witty uh, so uh appreciate you guys as always hanging out with us here in the shop i'm jared reminding you to always make questionable choices and yeah what he said i guess that's witty w enough. witty enough okay that's all i got all right we'll see you <laughs>